Well, I think it starts with the coaching staff that comes every day with a positive attitude and trying to get better. Uh, I think players feed off that. And if they know that you're genuinely in it for them and you're taking as much criticism or more than they are, then they're going to buy in unless they're bad guys. We did not have bad guys. We had great guys. And uh, so I think it's fairly easy to do that. Is a, like I said, this is a, an opportunity and a great city and a great job to attack your work as best you can. I, they, they feel that. And I, I think that the coaching staff did a, a great job of never letting down one day where, you know, what the heck with this. Never had those days. And players uh, didn't have those days. Uh, they were dealt, the players were dealt an unbelievably bad hand um, coming in here. And things had to break right to, uh, to get it on a positive spin. They didn't. I, I absolutely broke the, the worst way possible. But... Um, they hung in there, and they did their job exceedingly well for the hand they were dealt. And I got to say, you know, not a lot of support for them. And, you know, I'm proud of that part of them, their character. Right. Well, we're talking everywhere, just, you know, uh, TV, uh, radio, whatever you want to talk. <laughs> they hear this stuff. I try to do a good job of toning everything out so I can do my job. As a player, you don't do that. You listen to everything. And you have friends talking to them. You have agents talking to them. You have their business things pulling at them. You, you have so many distractions for them that it's remarkable that they come in. They came in with an attitude of, of playing for the team first, although we would get sideways sometimes. Um, but there was no support for them. And that's too bad. You know, they, they kind of at the end, bonded among themselves to get them you know, as far as best as they can. And that happens, and it's nobody's fault, it happens. And uh, you know, I just have to commend the players that they did a good job. Coach, what are your, your thoughts on the reports of Kobe leaving early, not being here, and, or is there being too much made out of that? Well, you know, it's, it's, You know, it's a situation that just nobody knew, and he did it, and he's had two tough years. Uh, team was not good. I understand that. He's very competitive, very feisty, but it's not going to affect him. He's going to come back with a vengeance, and he will come back and do his job 100%, and that's kind of all you hope for. Um, obviously, um, um, it's going to be made up a lot because that's what we do, uh, just talk about things that probably today is not relevant. And today it's like, okay, how can we get the Lakers back to the top as fast as we can? And you're going to do it with Kobe, so. Like that issue of nobody knew, that, that's happened a couple of times, right? I think training, there was a Jeremy, nobody knew. Right. Is that an issue that needs to be addressed in the future? Well, that, those are, I think Mitch will address that later on. That's not uh, for me to say or nay. Yeah. Coach, you talked about players of the past not playing the style. Kurt Ramos is a guy who was somewhat critical of you. He because he was on TV. <laughs> well, that's what you guys do, right? <laughs> How have you seen him kind of evolve into? Well, Kurt, yeah, Kurt's a great coach. He's a good, very good coach, very good man. He works hard at his craft. He loves to coach. He's on the floor with players improving them. So he was great. Uh, I'm sure he has his own thoughts on certain things. Every coach has a little different way to do it, but basically – we're all the same, more or less. We want good ball movement, spacing. Uh, you want to score as much as you can. You want to defend as well as you can. And we always sit around thinking, okay, we'll tweak this, tweak that. Let's do this, let's do that. Now, whether it comes down, you like this player, he likes that player, that's always normal. But Kurt, Kurt's a good coach, and, uh, and I tapped into him a lot. And he was very much a part of everything we did. Uh -huh. You were able to win him over, bring him over to your side, to your side by the end of uh, these last two years. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure in his mind he would like to play a little different way. Uh, he has success, you know, different ways. Uh, but I think his stats and his play showed that, yeah, he can be effective in any system. does not matter. Uh, again, I think Pal had, at the end of both years, really good years. Um, started off slow both years and that's where we kind of got in trouble when his play the first three or four months wasn't the Pau Casol and it turned into it and 
and I think we got a little sideways early, but at the end, we didn't, you know, we might have a little bit of different philosophy, but at the same time, I thought he played very well. Yeah, yeah, we, you, we can work together. That's no problem. And even, like I said, he might think that he wants two bigs or five bigs or whatever, whatever it is. Um, and every, every player has a, an opinion about how to play or what, you know, what would be best for them. Normally, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, those triangles. Like most players look at a team as a triangle where the top is the team. Uh, let me think. No, the player is like this, right? where he's at the top and then everything's below. A coach looks at it upside down, where you see the team and then you get down to the player. That's why there's a conflict between coaching and players always. They have two different perspectives. What's good for Powell? Powell's going to think, and I'm going to say what's good for the team. Sometimes they, they clash, you talk about it. But if he's professional, I'm professional, they're good guys, I try to be a good guy, then you will find a common ground and you'll get through it. And, and there could be, you know, the only thing I don't understand in this environment is, you know, why we have to play for you guys all the time. I don't understand how it comes out all the time. You know, I have an office that's always open. Just come down and talk to him and let's try to figure it out. But that's not how it's done here for some reason. I don't understand. It. But that's just the way it is. I, I'm optimistic that he will give everything he's got to play. He loves to play basketball. He loves to be a great teammate. He loves to win. Uh, uh, an unbelievable competitor in his own way. And everybody has a different way to do it. That I'm optimistic. Can he do it? I don't know his injuries. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know where you know, it could go away. I do know that the reservations are he's 40 years old. And so everybody has those. He has them. Uh, but he will battle and try to be effective at whatever role that he has, if he has a role, you know, because he could go through September and not do it, go through October and not do it. Uh, but I'm, the only thing I'm uh, for sure is he'll give everything he's got to get there. Mike, going back to your very interesting explanation to Trudell's question, with how bad Can you repeat that question because it's been a while? I got it, just, just kidding. Okay. Well, you tweak it, and, there's no, and I think it's beyond, for me, my opinion, it's easier for him, and it's, uh, it's just a different way of thinking it and, and playing it, but uh, there's no reason why anybody can't play. You, you can, I mean, Kendall Marshall's not the fastest guy in the world. I don't know if you've noticed that, but Kendall Marshall's good, pretty good, and he, he can play a certain way. He can play fast, so if he can play fast, Steve Nash can play fast, it's just you're playing faster at a slower speed. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's just... You play, it's not, it's not the physical speed, it's the ball movement, it's the, it's the spreading, it's the, the tempo that you have. I mean, a perfect example is San Antonio. Tim Duncan has gone from a post-up player that killed you to a guy that facil facilitates everything. And he's still one of the best in the league, and he still is on the best team in the league. So that's not an issue. Uh, now, the issue is the mindset and wanting to do it and, and, and making sure that's the right for everybody. And tweaks have to be done. But that's, that's part of the process. You mentioned that Kobe will play a big role in this, but how much faith do you have that this organization can do what it takes to turn things around? Just 100 percent. There's no doubt. Uh, LA is a great destination for anybody, first of all. The front office have done it a thousand times. I mean, you guys might not see it, all the tweaks they have to do every year uh, to win championships. You don't have all those banners for nothing. Um, Jim and Mitch do an unbelievable job of, of maximizing the possibilities. It doesn't always work out. Certain trades might not work out, but that was way beyond their uh, ability to be able to handle it. They had it on track. It went, went south a little bit. They will put it right back. But it does take time. There's new bargaining agreements in, in place that it takes a little bit of luck and tweaking. But uh, there's no doubt they'll, they'll get it done. Even when you account for, presumably, a healthier roster next season, what needs to strengthen this team to Well, that, that'll be determined in next week. So, you know, it's, it's easy for me. Oh, yeah, you need this, that. We need, you know, obviously need a lot. But having Kobe come back is a lot. That just right there is one thing that, you know, you look at the West and, and 
you know, Dallas last year lost Dirk for, you know, half a year or whatever they lost him for. They didn't make the playoffs. So you're thinking about losing Kobe Bryant for a whole year? What do you, what, what do you expect? You know, in a sense, come on. You know, you're not going to make the playoffs without Kobe being uh, Kobe. And so that's in alone is going to put you in a position to where you're, you're moving up the ranks now. And then Mitch and Jim will, will tweak different things, get d different guys, see what's available, and see if they do it as well as they can. No, I just, you know, losing does it. Losing, you know, grates on everybody. And so, I mean, that's the biggest thing. But, again, you know, uh, there's not a problem that can't over be overcome. You sit down, you do it, you get on the same page, and you go for it. Uh, so that's not a not an issue. But when you lose and, and certain things go different ways, and like I said, you get frustrated. Some people, you know, it's just little comments from players every once in a while. It's just a frustration. And, uh, and uh, it happens with everybody. I'm sure... You know, all of you have gone home after work and rant and rave to your wife. Well, we have to rant and rave in front of you guys, and that's just not great, but uh, it happens. And and then you get back and, okay, let's figure this out, and you figure it out. Yeah. I don't know if it's any harder, really. Uh, it's the same. It's hard no matter what. Um, but you're also doing it in, in, a, in, a, in a setting that you're not losing. It's harder during the year to start tweaking things and changing things and getting as the losses mount up, then, then, then it's tough. Uh, I think in the, in the off season, uh, everybody's fresh. Everybody's no, everybody in the league is the uh, exact same record. And everybody's got, you know, uh, aspirations to win a title. And so you get on that same page and you get everybody, everybody good and you move forward. No, I don't think so. No. We just got here, you Marcus. Or you just slid in a... Uh, you know, it's, no, I, I, don't, uh, I don't dwell on that. You know, it's not... Not up to me to make a judgment one way or the other. My job is to do the best I can, and and that it quits at that at that doorstep. I don't I don't go into everything else. Mike, we've talked a lot about offense, but defensively this season, a lot of times by the third quarter, the Lakers are giving up 100 points, and we expected the defense. To That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but go ahead. I, I got your meaning. I know what your meaning is, right? Right. Well, you know, uh, again, it's um, uh, you know, I know this is not an hour show, and and I won't get Mitch up here and he can talk, but uh, uh, we have to get better defensively, and we play a higher, fast-paced game. Uh, we play sometimes with smaller guys, and sometimes your numbers are, as our offensive numbers are, uh, skewed, and you have to take it um, where. When we had some of the guys like Steve Black, and the, and the season went sideways. We, we went into um, uh, injury-prone, whatever. The offense got stagnant because we went a lot of one-on-ones at a certain point because we lost our point guards. And when that happens, people are dropping their shoulders, and it shows up in the defensive end. So some of it, it will be better when you get a better team, and uh, well, most of it will be better when you get a better team. You get the camaraderie. You get people fighting for a common goal. Then the numbers will get better. They got to get a lot better. Um, but again, it, it has to be done. Everybody knows you have to play great defense to win a title. I mean, that's, that's you know, sometimes I hear why well, he doesn't think, well, come on. You know, everybody knows that. And, but you have a certain style you play. So then you can't just look at numbers. You got to look at wins and losses. You got to look at uh, can they make stops down the stretch? Can, uh, are there right adjustments made and all that? We'll do that. Uh, as soon as the roster gets settled, we can avoid some of the bad injuries. Not every team has injuries, but uh, some of the catastrophic injuries. Uh, the numbers will get better, uh, without a doubt. And they have to be better if you want to win. Mike, although the meeting still to be had, are you optimistic with the coaching? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, again, I've got one or two years left, you know, depending on how you look at it. 
and I'm their coach, and uh, and we'll sit down and see if everybody's good shape. It hasn't been done yet, and uh, we'll do that uh, in the future. Well, as coach, I mean, just you know, that's kind of. Um, this summer, you try to develop guys and, and try to help out, and then um, Mitch will put it on the, and Mitch and Jim will put it on the direction they want to go in, and then uh, you get behind them and you go. Time for two more guys. Mike, uh, in your opinion, are the local people building or are they trying to win a championship now? Because it seems like Kobe believes that the team is trying to win now, win a championship, and then it seems like there's another direction. Well, you know, I think some of it that's rhetoric. Uh, I think every everybody is trying to win a championship. Um, when the season went the way it went, I think you have to also be smart enough to go, you know, probably not going to win a championship this year with Kobe not coming back and Steve Nash being out. So can we develop the players and, and develop uh, how we want to go in the future? So you have to switch gears a little bit, but then the gear shifts back, you get Kobe back, you get Mitchell fill out the roster. Uh, you try to, you know, you go in the year with all the expectations that everybody else has, and then you adjust from there. But uh, now they'll they'll do everything they can to win every game that possible. Draft, draft pick? pick no, nah, I don't know anybody, and I don't watch college basketball, so I wouldn't know.